What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be reviewing and talking about that loss to St. Kilda. <laughs> Just before we jump straight into it, be sure to follow me on all my social media accounts popping up down below. If you are a new Swooper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you are a returning Swooper, welcome back. Thank you so much for rejoining me and sticking by me. Also, we're so close. I think we're about 50 subs away from 2,000. When we hit that 2,000 mark, everyone will sort out a draw and you'll win a Collingwood home. Or, so I keep saying home jersey. Any sort of Collingwood jersey that you're um, after. So, obviously, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends to subscribe. And let's do it. So, on a cold, wet, miserable Sunday, the Pies took on St. Kilda at the MCG in a game, well, in Robert Harvey's second game, and in a game where we kind of were expected to win. I don't know about the bookies, but I know that uh, within the Collingwood uh, supporters, we thought we'd have a pretty decent chance. Yes, our selection, or the selection table... Was a little bit weird going tall um, against St. Kilda, small in the back line against their talls. But we were all pretty confident. Well, most of us, I guess, were pretty confident uh, going into this game. The game started. Within 10 minutes, you kind of knew it was going to be one of those days. It was just all St. Kilda, all the pressure, all the um, attacking. It was played in their half for most of that first quarter. I said it in my uh, preview video that St. Kilda are a really good tackling side. Really good 1%, a really good pressuring side that we're going to bring it to us whenever we got the ball. And that's exactly what we saw. St. Kilda were just all over us. And it was just, I want to say it wasn't a typical Collingwood performance. But this year, that is a typical Collingwood performance where we just are lackluster. We couldn't hit targets. We were slow. We looked really lethargic. You know, Robert Harvey came out when he took over from Buckley and said, we're going to be playing fast football. It's going to be exciting. We're going to be attacking more. We're going to work on the six weeks. So yeah, we reverted to that slow style over handballing, over possessing, but just ultimately not doing a lot with it. And it goes to show where at halftime we had kicked one goal, squandered a lot of opportunities in front of goal. St. Kilda took the most of their opportunities when the ball was down their end. But even so... St. Kilda were just really, really quick to play football. Like, I, I, well, I haven't been able to find footage, but I was on the second level, so I could kind of see. So I was on the pocket, could kind of see how everything was working. St. Kilda were just controlling the flow of the game. If they were switching, they were switching quick. Our guys were just walking to contest. It just didn't look like they wanted to be out there. And I don't blame them, to be honest. We... And we sacked Buckley or got rid of Buckley, whatever you want to uh, call it. We get Robert Harvey on. We're in. We're looking for a, a new coach. The guys are just in football purgatory. It's the, probably the worst place to be. You know, you don't see a lot of caretaker coaches take teams to finals and win finals. And Harvey has been with Buckley for the last ten years or so. So the game plan wasn't going to change drastically more or less the same as what we've been seeing for the last uh, couple of years. So the guys are just going about it. Then I, I can guarantee you that they're just waiting for us to appoint a coach so they know what direction that we're heading in. In that third quarter, St. Kilda put on six goals. They kicked, like I think, about four in a row. We finally kicked um, a couple of goals. But going into that last quarter, we were 43 points down. And at that time, so what's 43? Six sixes of 36 42, so that's eight goals. So we were eight goals down, or eight goals one point down. That's a tall order to ask in the last quarter. So what does St. Kilda do? They um, take their, their foot off the gas. They start, you know, conserving their energy. They want to go on and, um, you know, recover for pretty much next week's game. They're already eight and a big goals up. So then, all of a sudden, Collingwood are like, okay, St. Kilda have slowed really down to a stop. Let's attack. Let's play on at all costs. And we kicked five goals, six in that uh, last quarter. And we go from a 43-point loss or all around that, you know, at the end of the third quarter to a nine-point loss. And if you pick up your phone and go, oh, cool, nine points, look, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. It's a, you know, a loss under a loss under two goals. But 
if you then delve a little bit deeper, you see that, you know, a lot of people were saying, okay, how can we play it like this in the last quarter and not for the rest of the game? we got to understand, you got to understand that we only played like that in the last quarter because St. Kilda had put their cues in the rack. They had already won this game, right? You know, when you when you kick three goals for, for three quarters of football, you're not going to win a lot of games unless it's a super, super, super low-scoring game. We we're 43 points out. It would have taken a miracle. Jesus Christ himself would have had to have, you know, come down from the heavens and kicked a couple goals for us. You know what I mean? St. Kilda put their cues in the rack, and that's why we looked good. That's why we looked quick. It, someone, uh, I can't remember who, who said it, some, some news reporter said, it was, it's fool's gold. You look at that last quarter, you go, yes, we can play quick, we can play fast, this is awesome, this is the Collingwood brand that we like. It is the Collingwood brand that we like, and we know we can play quick, we know we can play fast, but look at it in the way that St. Kilda had won the game. They, they won the game, Yeah. So, it's like, I compared it yesterday, it's like, um, you know, in that last quarter, you look at, you, you're going to McDonald's and you get a, you look at the, the, the menu and there's a beautiful Big Mac, yeah, you go, oh god, that looks so good, it looks so juicy, the, the sauce is coming out of everywhere, oh god, this is, I need this, that, that looks great, right, that's our last quarter, but then you get, the, then you get it, and it's just like this sloppy mess, it's like, it looks like a, like a cheeseburger with like one pickle, the meat's dry, there's barely any sauce, it's squashed as shit. Um, and that is the rest of our third quarters, uh, rest of our uh, one to three quarters of that of that game. On the outside, it looks great, that fourth quarter looks great, but then you, you delve a little bit deeper, you get that order, you get that Big Mac, it's, uh, it's not pretty. It is not a pretty sight. And McDonald's, if you're watching, yes, please um, sponsor me. I, uh, I love a Big Mac. But, as always, let's look at some of the positives for the game. Look, that, look, honestly, not a lot of positives. Yes, okay, the run and carry is a little bit of a positive, just in the sense that we know that we can't do that sort of stuff. It was too little too late. Yes, thank you to put the, put the cues back in the, in the rack in that last quarter. But we know we can do that from the first quarter if we really wanted to. So that's kind of a positive if you want to look at it. But Jordan Degoe as a midfielder, 32 disposals, one goal, uh... Two tackles, a couple of clearances. So, look, he didn't set the world on fire, but he was probably our best on ground um, yesterday or, or Sunday, whenever you're watching this video. Jordan Degoe as a midfielder, yes, we'd like to see it. Penelbury, eight clearances. Grundy battled pretty well, 33 hitouts and stuff like that uh, against Paddy Ryder and Rowan Marshall. They did a pretty good one-two on him. I think Quainor did really well as well. He's just not a defender. Uh, we need to play him on a wing or we need to play him in the midfield. He just struggles a little bit one-on-one. -on -one. Dagos did okay uh, playing on Brad Hill for most of the game. Brad Hill absolutely tailed us up. But look, there's, there's, there's signs where you can't, if you pick and choose, our VFL did really well. Our VFL was amazing. The young kids really stood up. Cal Brown, Will Kelly, Mark Keane, uh, uh, Junivert as well. There's a, lot to, there's a lot to like. Just It's just this game plan. Let me tell you, it's just this game plan. Next week, we play Richmond on a Sunday, 10 past 4. The battle of, uh, I don't know, the battle, of, the battle of, of something because we're out to stop Richmond's dynasty once and for all. They lose this game. They're cooked. Uh, we'd love to see Cox towel them up, but we have to play better football than we have these last two weeks. has to be something just exciting, just from the from the get-go, just hit the deck up, like we did against Melbourne, you know, like we did against Carlton in round two, just Jesus, and Brisbane as well in round three, Jesus Christ, give us some of that, please. Anyway, guys, this has just been my quick review, debrief of this game, be sure to follow me on all my social media accounts because I will be posting, I've got someone from the club board coming on a squawk with Swoop, so you're going to want to jump on that and ask any question and they will answer it. Let me tell you, it should be this week. But until then, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, Double Shackers, I'll sweep you later. Ooh la la.